My name is Barry Kickus. I work here at the U University of Arizona Yuma Agriculture Center with weed control and general agronomics. This project was conducted by the Applied Weed Science class, and we thought it would be useful to, to many of you as well to uh, go through each of our uh, plots here and describe uh, how the, these herbicides work. And what we did was we chose seven modes of action, seven mode, main modes of action. Um, and we uh, planted four different crops and sprayed over a couple different rates of uh, herbicides in each of these modes of action to induce the symptoms to help us better understand how these things work. Now we're standing in the plots for the Stevens root and shoot growth inhibitors. These are some of the older herbicides that we have. They've been around a long time, some of the most effective. They're all pre-emergent herbicides um, and includes things like the dinitroanilin. Sometimes people refer to them as the yellow herbicides, which includes, includes trifluralin or treflan, valan, uh, and uh, um, prol. Uh, it also includes uh, other uh, shoot and root growth inhibitors like Daxol and Herb, uh, as well as Crefar, which is not a dinitroanilin. The way these work is they're mitotic inhibitors. If you recall learning about mitosis, where a cell division, where the plant goes through several phases in, in uh, uh, um, increasing uh, cells. Um, and um, one phase, you'll recall, where the uh, going through mitosis, where the spindle cells form and pull the chromosomes once they've been formed apart to form a new cell. What many of these herbicides do is they stop that uh, mit mitosis at that point, so you get you stop getting cell division. Um, these work at the root tips. They're not very systemic. When the when the plant germinates and puts out new roots, they, those new roots pick up the herbicide, cell division stops right there at that root tip and growth ceases. So what you typically get is a restricted root growth or root development. And uh, we, we see that manifest in the plant by just a plant that looks like it doesn't have much of a root system. It looks like it's hurting for water and nutrients, which it is because it doesn't have a root system to pick up those the water and the nutrients. Symptoms were, are, are fairly characteristic with, we call them club roots or pruned roots. Let me um, dig up some plants here that are untreated and some that are treated and show you what these symptoms look like. Uh, here's some untreated plants. Okay, now here's a couple samples that were treated with Crefar some time ago. Um, this corn plant was untreated, and you can see a normal root development. Where you get your yeah, corn typically has a fibrous root system. You get your roots forming, and then your root hairs forming from your main root. Now here's a plant that was treated with Crefar, and you can see the comparison. These roots have picked up these on, the, the, from this treated plant. They've picked up the herbicide and, and stopped growing. So you'll typically get, uh, um, they sometimes referred to as club roots, uh, where you get the root uh, system just, uh, you stop getting cell division at that root tip. It gets swollen typically, which is why we call them clubs. And they just stop growing. You can see the different size in these plants both the same age, this is eventually going it, to, it's just not growing anymore. It's not going to have enough of a root system to support the plant and it will die. Um, these uh, herbicides are good on mainly on grasses and some small seeded broadleaf weeds. But this is a very typical symptom where you get the uh, lack of root, uh, root growth and you get club roots. It's not often very clear. Uh, sometimes you just get a, uh, where you have a plant like 
synthetics where you have a, a, a cap root, you won't get any lateral root development off of that cap root, and it'll eventually 